All right, former Netflix Cheer star Jerry Harris, his legal trouble has now ended the pre-prison phase with a sentencing. Now, before we get into that and what it means for many parties involved, allow me to give a brief, brief synopsis of what happened so far. So, nearly two years ago, in late summer, early fall 2020, we started talking about Jerry as news broke of an FBI raid on his home and then a subsequent arrest for charges of inappropriate sexual interactions with minors online. Less than a year after he became the breakout star of season one of Netflix's show Cheer. Now, at the time, he pleaded guilty and kept that plea until earlier this year, 2022, when he took a plea deal to change his plea to guilty in return for some of the charges to be dropped. This followed shortly after season two of Netflix Cheer aired which started filming pre-scandal, forcing Netflix to shed some light on the allegations against Jerry and hear directly from the teenage twin boys, their mom and lawyer, helping them bring a lawsuit against Jerry and some of the organizations that they allege protected him. Now, of course, this was coupled with reaction from the cast of the show, who was blindsided by this news only a few episodes after Jerry and his teammates showed and recounted the impact the fame of the show had on their lives. Sentencing took place in early July 2022, this month after it was reported prosecutors were seeking a 15-year sentence for Jerry, and that is where we start the update. And that update being that he was sentenced to 12 years in federal prison and 8 years of supervised release after that 12-year sentence. And the reaction of this news starts with actually the boys, their mom and lawyer who brought the initial claims and lawsuit to the attention of law enforcement and cheer organizations. Now they all echoed the similar sentiment of the sentence being indicative of the seriousness of these crimes and also called on the cheer organizations that they say failed to protect their kids and many others in the sport from predatory adults to change and correct course now that the spotlight has been put on this issue. They also recognize the lifetime of impact that everyone involved will have as a result of the situation. Although the judge's statement points towards more of this being an expression of seriousness, but not hopeless for Jerry or his victims to heal going forward. Now, the assistant U.S. attorney on the case also made a point to recognize the trauma from Jerry's upbringing, but added that it is, quote, not a blank check to commit sex offenses against minors. Amen. Reasons are not excuses. And that's a very common theme on this channel. But as far as those close to Jerry's reactions, according to USA Today, more than 80 character reference letters and videos were submitted by his lawyers, including to the to the court, including Coach Monica Aldama from Navarro Cheer called Navarro College Cheer who was the subject of the Netflix documentary. But although the article doesn't say who the castmates and members of the broader cheer community who sent in these videos, my recap of season two coverage of this story might give some indication on who may have sent them during the trial, but you can check that out later after we finish. I also wanna highlight a few comments from previous videos on this on my channel that you may have missed if you have been following along since the beginning but haven't revisited those videos and comment sections. So first, there was a comment about kind of where is the proof early on in this. And at this point, we don't really need to show proof publicly because he took a guilty plea. But also, this does highlight my previous comments questioning the whole plea bargain aspect of the legal system in general, which often is more favorable to people with more funds to extend litigation until the other party folds or to go all the way through a trial and then still end up maybe being guilty. But also a few comments were confused about people around Jerry not ending communication with him after these, after these allegations came out. And on season two, there was a lot of crying and sadness over the news breaking. And that commenter I'm referring to wondered why they wouldn't just cut off Jerry and have the line for them be child abuse. And I see that side, but I also don't know how I would react unless I was put in that position. And as bad as that sounds, I just don't know. One other comment I want to highlight was explaining my confusion on Jerry asking the teenagers for their age online in, in uh, DMs and then proceeding to still do sexually explicit things with minors after they had already confirmed they were underage. And unfortunately, the commenter made a lot of sense saying, well, Jerry seems to be attracted to minors. So that age confirmation was only a green light for him to move forward and probably kind of made his fantasy more real, unfortunately. But 
that makes sense because the people like us who aren't attracted to minors would probably see that and have that be a red light or a, a sign to stop and reverse and turn around and not, not contact any further. But um, they also added, sadly, that this is likely the same age that Jerry was uh, abused himself and is often a, a pattern in uh, offenders themselves who were abused at a certain age and that usually ends up being their target age of a person, which is really sad. But what does life look like now that Jerry has been sentenced? So for Jerry, obviously, it looks like prison for more than a decade. But also, as a guilty man of underage sex crimes who is about to go to prison, he might not have the best time in prison if I know anything about how child sex crime prisoners are treated in there. But we'll have to wait to see if there's anything that comes out about that. But on top of that, Jerry does have to live with this the rest of his life, knowing that he was guilty of these specific crimes, which society views, at, at least I think the broader society views as kind of the worst of the worst in terms of uh, crimes besides murder. But also, those standing by him have to explain why they are doing so as well, similar to other reality TV stars like Erica Jane and Jen Shaw, who are both in the Housewives world, which I cover on this channel as well, mostly the Erica Jane side, but I reference Jen Shaw. So, if anything, I think this sets a precedence for others thinking about doing anything like this going forward, and also puts on notice anyone who has done this before and hasn't been held accountable yet that maybe their time is up. But with that though, it appears to be a good thing for victims, especially in this sport, and hopefully makes this one less place for predators to find victims. To see my previous videos on this story, one similar to this that you may like, or the full broadcast where this segment was taken from, make sure to tap or click the playlist or video on the screen on YouTube, or click around the channel wherever you are tuning in from. And with that said, thank you so much for having me in your online life.